Flight attendant kicks black mom off plane. Five minutes later, she receives a shocking call. A routine flight turns into a nightmare when a black mother is kicked off a plane by a flight attendant. But moments later, an unexpected phone call changes everything. What shocking revelation awaits this distraught passenger? Jada Anthony settled into her first-class seat on the airplane, carefully adjusting her sleeping six-month-old son in her arms. As a frequent flyer, she knew the drill. Phone off, seatbelt fastened, tray table up. The familiar announcements murmured as passengers stowed their final items. Jada closed her eyes, looking forward to touching down in Ohio in just over an hour. As the plane hummed with pre-flight activity, her mind wandered to the reason for her trip. After years of postponing due to her hectic work schedule and her new baby, she would finally visit her mother. A mix of excitement and guilt tugged at her heart. It had been far too long since she'd last seen her mom, and the thought of their upcoming reunion made her smile. The flight attendants began their final checks, moving efficiently through the cabin. Jada took a deep breath, feeling the familiar pre-flight mixture of excitement and slight nervousness. No matter how many times she flew, there was always that tiny flutter in her stomach as the plane prepared for takeoff. She glanced out the window at the bustling tarmac of O'Hare International Airport. Chicago had been her home for the past two decades, and she loved the city's energy. But there was something special about returning to her parents' home in Cleveland, even for a visit. It was a chance to reconnect with her mother and a part of herself that sometimes got lost in the hustle and bustle of her corporate life. Jada thought about how much had changed since she'd left Cleveland. She'd gone from a fresh-faced college graduate to a senior executive at a Fortune 500 company. It had been just her and her mother since her father died when she was young, and her mom had been there every step of the way, offering unwavering support and sage advice. Not long after, the captain's voice crackled over the intercom, welcoming passengers and announcing their imminent departure. Jada felt the usual surge of anticipation. In just over an hour, she'd be in Cleveland. In two hours, she'd be hugging her mother. The thought filled her with a warmth that no first-class seat could match. Suddenly, the plane, taxiing towards the runway, abruptly changed direction. Confused murmurs rippled through the cabin as passengers realized they were returning to the gate. Jada's heart raced. Had something gone wrong with the aircraft? Then, the lead flight attendant, a tall woman with blonde hair pulled back in a tight bun, walked down the aisle. To Jada's shock, she stopped right at her row. Ma'am, I need you to gather your belongings and come with me immediately, the attendant said firmly. Jada looked confused and hugged her baby tighter. I'm sorry? Is there a problem? Was there a problem with her ticket? Or was it something else entirely? The anticipation and joy she had felt moments ago evaporated, replaced by a growing dread. The flight attendant refused to explain and instead gestured for her to hurry up. Jada looked around. The other passengers were all looking at her. What were they thinking? She wondered. Would they think she was being removed from the plane because she'd lied her way to first class? Did they believe she was an imposter trying to flee the country with a baby that didn't even belong to her? She shook her head, trying to stop herself from spiraling. Still, she felt her face flush in embarrassment. As she fumbled to collect her things, Jada couldn't shake the feeling that her long-awaited reunion with her mother was slipping away. Whatever was happening, she had a sinking feeling that her carefully laid plans were about to be derailed. The short, convenient flight she had chosen over a long drive now seemed like a decision she might regret. With trembling hands, Jada stood up, acutely aware of the curious stares from nearby passengers, cradling her now fussing baby against her chest. She followed the flight attendant towards the front of the plane. Can you at least tell me why? Jada asked, her voice shaking slightly. The flight attendant's expression softened a fraction. I'm not at liberty to discuss the details, ma'am, but you need to come with me now. The pilots are taking us back to the gate. But why am I the only one who needs to disembark? She insisted. That's when the flight attendant muttered something under her breath that made Jada's blood freeze in her veins. The woman spoke between her teeth, and she couldn't be 100% sure of what she'd heard, but she was fairly certain that she said she shouldn't have been on that plane in the first place, especially in first class. Why not? Jada asked. Did the flight attendant know something she didn't? Why wasn't she supposed to be on that plane? It was the right one. She was sure of it. They had checked her ticket twice, so she couldn't have boarded the wrong one. And what had her seat in first class have anything to do with what was happening? Unfortunately, it looked like she was not going to get the answers she needed, as the flight attendant simply sneered at her with a mocking glance and kept walking. As Jada disembarked from the plan and followed the gate agent to a private office, her mind raced with possibilities. A familiar, uncomfortable feeling settled in her stomach. 
one she had experienced all too often as a black woman navigating spaces where she was often the minority. She couldn't help but wonder, was this because she was black? Was her presence in first class somehow deemed suspicious? No, they couldn't be kicking her off the plane right before takeoff just because they didn't like the color of her skin. Or could they? The memory of an incident from three years ago flashed through her mind. She had been flying first class on a business trip, a rare treat afforded by a recent promotion. As she approached the priority boarding line, a flight attendant gave her a once-over, eyes narrowing slightly. I'm sorry, ma'am, the attendant had said with a tight smile, but this line is for first class passengers only. Jada had felt her face grow hot with embarrassment and anger. I am a first class passenger, she replied, showing her boarding pass. The attendant's eyes had widened slightly, a flicker of surprise quickly masked. Oh, I see. My apologies. Please go ahead. The interaction had been brief, but the implication was clear. The attendant hadn't expected a black woman to be in first class. It was a painful reminder of the prejudices Jada still faced, even as a successful professional. Now, as she sat in the airport office waiting for what was to come, Jada couldn't shake the suspicion that history was repeating itself. Had she been singled out because she was black? Was her presence in first class once again deemed suspicious? The gate agent's vague explanations that she had a call only fueled Jada's concerns. What if someone had complained about her? Or worse, what if security had flagged her for some reason? As seconds ticked by, Jada's imagination ran wild. She envisioned stern-faced security officers bursting in, demanding to see her identification. She imagined being subjected to additional screening, her belongings rifled through in front of curious onlookers while trying to keep her increasingly restless baby calm. Jada tried to calm herself, taking deep breaths and reminding herself that she had done nothing wrong. She was a respected professional, a loving mother, and a law-abiding citizen. Surely this was all just a misunderstanding that would be cleared up quickly. Not even five minutes later, just as she was about to demand who was in charge, the door opened. Jada tensed, bracing herself for whatever might come next. But instead of security officers or stern-faced airline representatives, it was just the gate agent and another agent looking somewhat flustered and holding a cordless phone. I'm so sorry for the delay, Miss Anthony, the agent said, apologetically smiling. We were having some technical difficulties with our phone lines. Here's the call for you. It's your husband, ma'am. He says it's an emergency. With trembling hands, Jada took the receiver. Hello, John, what's going on? Her husband's voice came through, tight with panic. Jada, thank God, it's Marcus. There's been an accident. Jada's knees went weak and she gripped the desk for support. Marcus was their son, a star athlete playing football. What happened? Is he okay? She managed to choke out. John's voice cracked. He collapsed during practice, some kind of head injury. They rushed him to the hospital. He's, he's in a coma, Jada. The doctors don't know. The room spun around Jada as the magnitude of the situation hit her. Her baby boy was fighting for his life, and she was hundreds of miles away. Marcus had just started earning a football scholarship at the University of Denver East. They'd decided to let him pursue this opportunity, even though it meant him living away from home. Now, in an instant, everything had changed. She had to get to Denver. Now. I'm already in Denver, John added, his voice a mix of relief and worry. I was on that business trip in Colorado Springs, remember? I got the call and drove straight to the hospital. At least one of us was close by. Jada felt a wave of gratitude wash over her. Knowing John was already there with Marcus was a small comfort, but it also intensified her need to join them. Thank God you're there, John, she said, her voice catching. I'll be on the next flight out. Keep me updated on any changes, okay? As she ended the call, Jada's mind raced with fear for her son and determination to reach him as quickly as possible. As soon as she hung up, Jada turned to the agents, who had been hovering nearby with a sympathetic expression. I need to get to Denver immediately. My son is in the hospital. Please, can you help me? The agent nodded quickly. Of course, Miss Anthony. We're already working on rebooking you. There's a direct flight to Denver and it will leave in two hours. We'll get you on that one. Jada was relieved. Thank you, but what about my luggage? And I don't have anything with me. I need to... The agent held up a hand. Don't worry about anything. We'll take care of rerouting your luggage. We also have a private waiting area where you can rest until your flight. Is there anything else you need? Jada shook her head, momentarily speechless. She was processing too many things at the same time and didn't know where to start. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw the flight attendant who had removed her from the plane roll her eyes. Did she think she was overreacting or what? Jada wondered, feeling rage boil under her skin. Her son was in a coma for heaven's sake. 
The flight attendant was still muttering nonsense under her breath, but she couldn't catch what she was saying. However, she had the chilling feeling that she was calling her a drama queen and telling the gate agent that she was just like any other black mama, controlling and dramatic. The gate agent replied with an angry look that shushed the flight attendant immediately. The woman quickly left the room, presumably to return to the plane. Jada decided she had more important things to worry about and quickly called her mother to explain she was not going to be able to visit her in Cleveland after all. When it was finally time to board, the gate agent personally escorted Jada to the plane and ensured she was comfortably seated. As she settled in, she noticed a packed lunch on her seat, another thoughtful gesture from the airline staff. As the plane took off and her baby was sleeping, Jada's thoughts turned to the events that led to this moment. The initial shock and humiliation of being escorted off the first flight seemed trivial now in light of the real emergency, but questions still nagged at her. How had John managed to get in touch with her? And why was there a dramatic removal from the plane? Surely there were less disruptive ways to relay an urgent message to a passenger. Jada called a passing flight attendant. Excuse me, I was wondering if you could explain something. I was removed from another flight earlier today because of an emergency call. Do you know why that was handled the way it was? The attendant's brow furrowed. That's unusual. Typically, we can relay urgent messages to passengers without deplaning them. Do you mind if I look into this for you? Jada nodded gratefully. A few minutes later, the attendant returned with a concerned expression. Miss Anthony, I'm so sorry, but it appears there was a miscommunication earlier. The instruction was to inform you of the urgent call before disembarking you. I'm not sure why it was handled that way. The flight passed in a blur of worry and silent prayers. As soon as they landed in Denver, Jada rushed to catch a cab to the hospital, her heart pounding. She burst through the emergency room doors, scanning frantically for any sign of her family. A nurse pointed her to a private waiting area, where she found John slumped in a chair, looking utterly exhausted. John! Jada cried, rushing to embrace him. How is he? Any change? Her husband shook his head wearily. No change yet. He's still unconscious but stable. The doctors are running more tests. Just then, a tall man in a white coat approached them. Mr. and Mrs. Anthony? I'm Dr. Reeves, the neurologist handling your son's case. We have some updates for you. Jada and John clasped hands tightly as they braced for the news. Dr. Reeves continued. The good news is that the swelling in Marcus's brain has started to subside. We're cautiously optimistic. However, we won't know the full extent of any potential damage until he regains consciousness. When will that be? Jada asked anxiously. The doctor's expression turned grave. That's hard to say. It could be hours, days, or longer. We just have to wait and see. I know that's not what you want to hear, but head injuries can be unpredictable. Jada and John spent the next several days in a haze of worry, barely leaving Marcus's bedside. Friends and neighbors rallied around them, bringing food and offering support. Jada's boss assured her to take all the time she needed. A small sound jolted her awake on the fourth day as she was dozing in the uncomfortable hospital chair. She looked up to see Marcus's eyelids fluttering. John, look, she whispered urgently, shaking her husband's arm. I think he's waking up. They watched with bated breath as their son's eyes slowly opened. Marcus blinked groggily, his gaze unfocused. Marcus? Honey, can you hear me? Jada said softly, squeezing his hand. His eyes found hers, confusion evident. Mom, he croaked. What? Where am I? Tears of relief streamed down Jada's face. You're in the hospital, sweetheart. You had an accident at football practice, but you're going to be okay. Over the next few hours, as the doctors ran tests and evaluated Marcus's condition, the full story of what happened emerged. During a routine tackle drill, Marcus had collided hard with another player. He'd seemed fine at first, even finishing practice, but later, in the locker room, he'd suddenly collapsed. I remember feeling dizzy, Marcus said weakly. Then everything went black. The doctors explained that Marcus had suffered a subdural hematoma, bleeding between the brain and the skull. It was a serious injury, but they were optimistic about his recovery. He'll need to take it easy for a while, Dr. Reeves cautioned. No contact sports for at least six months, but barring any complications, he should make a full recovery. As the relief of Marcus's improving condition settled in, Jada's thoughts returned to the strange circumstances surrounding her flight. She decided to contact the airline's customer service department for clarification. Surprisingly, she received a call from a senior customer relations manager named Sarah. Miss Anthony, I want to personally apologize for how your situation was handled. We've conducted a thorough investigation and it's clear that proper protocols were not followed. Sarah explained that while relaying urgent messages to passengers was standard, 
Removing someone from a flight without properly explaining the situation was only done in extreme circumstances. Upon learning about your son's condition, the agent made a judgment call that it would be best for you to leave immediately to see him, Sarah continued. In the moment's urgency, the agent failed to fully inform the pilot and flight attendants of the situation on the ground. This led to confusion and mishandling regarding your removal from the plane. We're implementing additional training to ensure this doesn't happen again, including proper emergency communication procedures. Jada appreciated the transparency and found herself somewhat mollified by the explanation. Mistakes happened, especially in tense situations like the one she'd gone through. Still, she couldn't shake a nagging feeling. She still vividly remembered hearing the flight attendant murmur something under her breath, and she was almost completely sure it was a derogatory remark. I understand, but I have to ask. Do you think my race affected how I was treated? There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Finally, Sarah spoke, her voice measured. Miss Anthony, I wish I could say with certainty that it didn't. However, the truth is that unconscious bias can affect anyone's actions. While I don't believe there was any malicious intent, it's possible that race influenced the flight attendant's judgment in the heat of the moment, especially given the lack of complete information they had received. Jada felt a complex mix of emotions at this admission. It was a familiar story, good intentions marred by ingrained prejudices. However, she recognized the airline's efforts to address the situation transparently and the care she'd received after being removed from the plane. Sarah continued, We're taking this incident very seriously. In addition to providing further training for the individuals involved, we're rolling out enhanced diversity and inclusion programs for all customer-facing staff. We have work to do and are committed to doing better. Considering everything, the urgency of her son's situation, the agents and flight attendants' misguided but well-meaning actions because they had gone above and beyond to help her in a crisis, and the airline's comprehensive response, Jada was ready to accept the apology. I appreciate your honesty and the steps you're taking, she said. Let's hope this leads to positive changes. A black mother's harrowing experience of being kicked off a plane led to a shocking revelation about her son's health crisis, exposing both human compassion and lingering societal issues. What are your thoughts on how the airline handled the situation? Have you ever experienced or witnessed similar treatment while traveling? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.